This is the Lockpicking Lawyer, and what I have for you today is a Fortress Model 1850D Combination Padlock. This is a relatively cheap lock with a thin stainless steel body and an 8.5mm case hardened shackle. What we're going to do today is take a look at a couple different ways we can open this up if we don't have the combination. The first, and by far the fastest way to do it, involves using a padlock shim like this. It's a thin piece of metal that's designed to be inserted in between the shackle and the locking lug that is holding it closed. On these Fortress 1850s, there is only one locking lug, and it's on the left side if you're looking at the lock from the front. So let's insert this on the left side of the shackle. We can press down and wiggle as we lift up the shackle, and there we go, we got it open. Let's do that one more time. Press down and wiggle as we lift on the shackle. And once again, we got it open. So shimming this open really only takes a couple of moments. But let's say you don't have a shim and you still need to get into it. Well, it turns out this lock is extraordinarily easy to decode. We start out the process by turning the combination wheel, two or three complete turns to the right, and then what we're gonna do is lift up on the shackle with moderate tension and start turning until we hear a click. I'm still turning right. Okay, we just got a click there and it's on the number two. Now that is not our first digit. What that represents is the edge of a gate that ranges from two all the way back to 38. These fortress locks actually have terrible tolerances which means you only have to get within one or two digits of the actual number for this to open. So the real number is going to be in the middle of that range, which is zero. Now to dial the second digit, we have to reverse direction, start going left, and we have to pass the second digit once and then stop on it. So what I'm gonna do is turn this 360 degrees to the left to ensure that I passed it once, and then I'm going to again apply moderate tension to the shackle and continue turning until it stops. We just stopped on eight or I'm sorry, nine or ten, and that may or may not be our second digit. What I'm going to do is keep applying this tension and turn it backwards. If it's loose, I know that's not the second digit, and I keep going. Okay, we stopped again on 16, so I'm going to turn it backwards. You can see it's loose, that's not our second digit. Keep going. 26, and I turn it backwards now, it's actually very tight, so that is our second digit. To get the third digit, all I have to do is keep applying tension to the shackle, keep turning to the right, and it just pops open when we get to the last digit, which is 37. So you can confirm 0, 26, 37, that's what we found out. Let's go through that process one more time. We start out by turning the dial to the right two or three times, and then we're going to apply moderate tension up on the shackle and keep turning until we hear a click. There we go, we got that click. Once again, it's on the number two, which is the edge of the four digit range that is the gate for the first digit. So our first digit is zero. We're gonna reverse direction, start going left. I'm turning 360 degrees to ensure I pass the second digit once. And I'm going to apply that upwards tension again and keep turning until the combination wheel stops. We stopped right about eight or nine. I'm going to turn it backwards. You can see it's still loose. That means that's not our second digit. Stopped on 16, still loose, so that's not our second digit. Keep going. Stopped on 25 or 26. And you can see it's pretty tight, giving me some clicks. That means we have the correct one. So I'm going to keep turning left until that shackle pops. And that's all there is to it. These fortress locks can be decoded almost as fast as if you actually had the combination. So clearly not something you're ever going to want to rely on, even for a low security application. As far as the physical construction goes, I'm relatively certain you could hit this with a hammer and it would open up. So once again, not something you're gonna wanna rely on. So one other note about this is it's not limited to fortress locks. 
you'll find actually quite a few companies using this exact same lock under their own name. You can us usually recognize them by looking for this keystone shape right at the top of the dial and also the white circle that you see around the thumb turn for the dial. So if you see those two things, the combination lock is probably susceptible to this decoding method. That's all I have for you on this Fortress Model 1850D combination padlock. If you do have any questions or comments about it, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.